Most people believe gold is found. They are wrong. Gold is not found. Gold is made slowly, violently, and with terrifying precision, deep inside Earth by forces so powerful they can bend mountains, crack continents, and crush a stone into something more valuable than money. What you are about to hear is not folklore. It is not speculation. It is not treasure hunter fantasy. It is the hidden science of how nature manufactures one of the rarest financial assets on the planet, using heat, pressure, chemistry, and time. And the most shocking part? Almost no one who searches for gold understands this process. They search rivers, they dig dirt, they scan with machines, but gold does not obey humans. It obeys physics. It obeys geology. And when you understand how gold is actually created, you stop hunting blindly and start predicting where wealth is quietly forming beneath the ground. Gold is not born, it is forged. Gold does not appear when rocks break. Gold appears when earth almost breaks. Deep below the surface, far beyond where drills can reach, there are places where rock does not behave like rock anymore. Under enormous pressure and heat, stone begins to flow. It becomes semi-liquid. It moves slowly like thick honey inside the planet. These are called hydrothermal systems, and they are where gold is truly made. Here, superheated water infused with metals moves through microscopic cracks in the Earth's crust. These fluids carry dissolved elements, silica, sulfur, copper, and gold, moving through fractures that are sometimes thinner than a human hair. But gold does not stay dissolved forever. When pressure drops, when temperature changes, when chemistry shifts, gold is forced out of the fluid. It crystallizes, it locks into place. This is how nature mints gold, not in rivers, not in soil, but in fractures created by tectonic violence. Why gold only appears where earth was wounded. Gold does not form in peaceful rock. It forms in damaged rock, faults, shear zones, fractures, old earthquake scars, these are not accidents, they are gold factories. When continents collide, rock breaks. When mountains rise, stress builds. When pressure finally releases, massive cracks open deep underground. These cracks become highways for hot, metal-rich fluids. And wherever those fluids slow down, gold drops out. This is why gold is found in veins. This is why it appears in quartz. This is why it clusters instead of spreading evenly. Gold forms exactly where earth was once ripped open. If you can read old wounds in the land, you can read gold. Quartz is not decoration. It is a gold trap. Quartz is not beautiful by accident. It is beautiful because it is a chemical prison for gold. When hot, mineral-rich fluids move upward through cracks, silica comes out of solution and forms quartz. But gold, which cannot remain dissolved when pressure drops, gets trapped inside this crystallizing silica. The result? White quartz veins filled with microscopic gold. Sometimes those veins grow thick. Sometimes they fracture again. Sometimes they break and release their gold into rivers and soil. But the origin is always the same. Gold rides inside boiling water deep underground, and quartz locks it in. This is why prospectors who understand geology look for quartz before they look for gold. Why gold is rare. Even where it forms, even in perfect conditions, nature does not create much gold. Gold is heavy, Gold is chemically stubborn. Gold does not like to move. Only a tiny fraction of Earth's gold ever escapes the mantle and reaches the crust. And of that tiny fraction, only a small amount ends up concentrated enough to be valuable. This is why gold is not evenly distributed. It appears in clusters, 
not fields. One mountain may contain millions of dollars in gold. The one beside it may contain nothing because gold only forms where pressure, heat, chemistry, and time align just right. Rivers do not create gold, they reveal it. When you see gold in a river, that gold was not born there. It was born in a mountain that was destroyed. Over millions of years, wind, rain, ice, and gravity grind rock into sediment. Quartz veins break apart. Gold is freed. And because gold is heavy, it sinks. Streams and rivers act like sorting machines. They wash away light material and leave heavy gold behind. This is why gold accumulates in bends, cracks, and bedrock traps. But the river did not make the gold. The river simply uncovered what geology already forged. Why most people dig in the wrong places. Most beginners search where gold was moved. Professionals search where gold was made. Rivers show you leftovers. Bedrock shows you origins. The richest gold zones on earth are not where gold traveled, but where gold stopped moving, where fractures sealed, where fluids cooled, where quartz hardened, where gold was locked in place. These are the places that quietly create real wealth. Nature is still making gold. This is what almost no one realizes. Gold formation is not ancient history. It is happening right now. Earth is still cracking, fluids are still moving, veins are still forming, in deep faults beneath mountains, in volcanic belts, in tectonic collision zones. Nature is still minting gold like a slow underground printing press. And those deposits will one day rise to the surface, just as ancient ones did. Gold is not disappearing, it is being prepared. Why gold is the ultimate natural asset. Gold is not valuable because humans like it. It is valuable because Earth rarely makes it. It takes planetary violence, chemical precision, and millions of years to produce even a small amount. Gold is not printed. It is not programmed. It is not promised. It is forged. That is why it has survived every currency collapse in human history. That is why civilizations rise and fall. But gold remains. And now that you understand how gold is created, you can begin to understand where it hides. And more importantly, why some ground is worth nothing and some ground quietly holds fortunes. Gold does not hide randomly. It hides where Earth was forced to change. Every major gold field on the planet follows the same invisible blueprint, a pattern written not in maps, but in pressure, heat, and broken stone. When continents collided, the crust thickened. When mountains rose, rock fractured. When deep fluids surged upward, metals moved. Gold followed those pathways. This is why the richest deposits are never in smooth landscapes. They appear in distorted terrain, folded hills, faulted valleys, twisted layers of rock that tell a story of violent stress. Where the ground looks broken, gold was given a chance to escape the deep earth. The most valuable gold zones are not defined by surface color. They are defined by structural traps when hot gold-bearing fluids move upward through cracks, they eventually reach zones where pressure drops suddenly. The fluid expands. The chemistry changes. The dissolved gold can no longer stay in solution. It crashes out. Sometimes it plates onto quartz. Sometimes it coats microscopic fractures. Sometimes it fills voids in shattered rock. But wherever this happens, gold stops moving. That stopping point becomes a deposit. This is why miners search for fault intersections, bend points in rock layers, and old tectonic boundaries. Those locations behave like natural gold safes, places where earth locked wealth into stone. Over time, erosion begins its quiet work. Rain, frost, heat, and gravity 
grind mountains down grain by grain. Gold veins break apart, quartz fractures, gold is released, not as dust but as heavy particles that refuse to float away. Streams collect that gold, rivers sort it, gravity concentrates it, but these placer deposits are only echoes of something far richer, still buried in bedrock. The real money never washed downstream, it stayed in the fractures that formed it. This is why experienced prospectors and mining companies do not simply follow rivers. They follow structures. They study fault maps. They analyze shear zones. They look for ancient compression belts. Because gold does not care about today's landscape. It obeys the ancient scars of Earth. The deeper truth is that geology is not just a science. It is a financial language. Every fold in rock is a ledger. Every fracture is a transaction. Every quartz vein is a vault. When you understand how Earth moves wealth from the mantle to the surface, you stop gambling and start investing. Gold does not appear where hope is. It appears where physics allowed it. This is why gold has never been replaced. Stocks depend on confidence. Currencies depend on trust. Gold depends only on nature's brutality and time. No central bank can print pressure. No government can mint tectonic force. No algorithm can manufacture quartz veins. Earth does the work. Humanity only discovers it. And that is the real untold science of gold. Not glitter, not speculation but a planet slowly forging wealth beneath our feet, whether we are ready to recognize it or not. Gold is not a myth. It is a geological fact. And those who understand its origin will always be one step ahead of those who simply chase its shine.